from Kaiora, I'm Ann Thorpe and today I've got the fabulous Tina Cross coming for lunch. She's a healthy beast and so am I, so I'm cooking up the most magnificent feed you'll ever see. Well, all sorts of goodies in the pātaka today. Spectacular things like this little crayfish, it's delicate, it's big enough for Tina and myself, these, these prawns here. Got the Alfonsino fish over there. There's some fantastic sausages and pancetta from Wellsford. That's just down the road from me. All these vegetables I've got from the Otara market, and I've got these tamarillos and apples, and they're going to go for our dessert today. Well, I'm cooking for a star today, and I'm kicking off as Tina would kick off with it, like this on the stage. On my stage, I'm kicking off with crayfish and tiger prawns with a little bit of feistiness. The first thing I want to do is cut the flesh out of this cray here. Now, it's only a tiny cray, big enough for the two of us. Cut the sides away like this. Either side, so I can haul out that flesh and cut it up. Nice medallions. This coda was caught this morning to my bowl here. I'm going to cut these prawns in half like this. And into here, I'm going to put a little bit of turmeric. There's about a teaspoon of it there about half a teaspoon of fish sauce. Big teaspoon of garlic and about a spoonful of chilli. Now that chilli isn't too hot, it's going to be all right for Tina and I. I'm also going to put a little bit of oil into it. I'm using the good oil here, really nice extra virgin olive oil, because I'm not putting any oil into my pan, that pan is searingly hot now. I'm going to fire this in there. Just wash my hands. Toss this all about. I've got some fresh herbs and a few organic leaves here. Pop there. As soon as the crayfish is cooked, the dish is ready to plate up. I'm going to take the prawns out because they're cooked. Put them on my bed of organic leaves and herbs here. And now the crayfish is cooked. Over the top. It's as simple as that. I need to put some lemon juice over the top, a little bit more oil over that. I'm going to put some lime zest over that. And just a few sprigs of dill. There we go. Tina and I are going to kick off with this. Well, I've got a big fish for a big star, even though she's tiny. I've got this Alfonsino fish here. Look at the colour of it, isn't it wonderful? And I'll tell you what, it eats beautifully. It's a deep sea fish. You find it in waters 400 to 800 metres. It swims around with the orange ruffy. Anyway, I'm only going to cut off a couple of pieces for Tina and I from here. It's a very oily fish and the oils in this fish are very, very good for us. 
I'm cooking it skin side down in my pan here. And we need to heat that pan up so that it's nice and hot so it's going to sear this when I pop it in there. Nice. I've got a piece there. And I'll just put another piece in since I can squeeze it in for good measure. Now cook it for a while on that side. The skin always takes the brunt of the heat. Put a bit of seasoning as in salt and pepper over the fish. I'm going to transfer this onto my oven tray here to go into my oven and to finish this off. So from here, we'll turn it up the other way. Look how beautiful that is. And we're going to finish that off in the oven now. My oven's on 180 degrees on a fan bake. Pop it in there. It's only going to take a few moments to cook, so we'll keep an eye on it. And today, with my Alfonsino fish, I'm going to throw some roast garlic into my pan here. Same pan's fine. I'll just turn it down a fraction. We don't want to burn everything now. Cut up some red capsicum. And I've also got here some sugar beans. Now these have only taken a few minutes. Look at the colour. We're right into colour. Colour is healthy. They're cooked. They're ready. The fish has been in the oven five minutes now, so we'll get it out. Alfonsino fish actually takes a little longer than you think to cook. You need to cook it through. It's quite a dense fish. It's cooked beautifully. I'll plate this up. And I'm just going to tumble these other things on the plate. Squeeze a bit of lime juice over the top, like that. Salt and pepper, of course. Over the top. And look at that. What a fish dish. I'm so excited you're here. I truly am. Oh, thank you so much. Ben. Oh, let's dig in. I know. I've been looking at this for a moment, and it just looks scrumptious. <laughs> now, I hope it's not too feisty for you, but I heard you're a feisty gal. Well, you know, it's a good thing to have. Especially on that stage. <laughs> Yes, no, not, not the person I am off the stage, but I tell you what, feisty in, in, in the seafood, no problem. Okay, well, let's have a little crack at that. Awesome, thank you. Mmm. Mmm. That is absolutely exquisite. Mmm. I do love seafood. Cray and prawns, a favourite of mine. How did you know? Oh, I think beautiful. it's because you're Māori, and most Māori yes, love kaimoana. This is true. You're a fabulous performer, and you're a fabulous woman, mother, everything. Oh, I thank you for that. Well, I'm very privileged to have been doing what I do for 33 odd years as an old pro. I don't <laughs> mind the word old because, you know, you get to a point where you go, I'll just fix it all up, bit of makeup, <laughs> bit of a hairdo, funky clothes. Oh. Mm. It all works. It all works. I don't think I've actually ever mixed crayfish and prawn together. Although, you know, at home, anyhow, we've had either crayfish, yes. because that's crayfish and that's prawn, <laughs> sort of thing. But I love the way you were just, you know, in fact, I'm going to get this recipe. Now look, I'm nearly finished and you haven't. Mm. That means I'm the guts. Not at all, babe. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to the kitchen and get our next dish. Organised. Lovely. Okay. I can't wait to find out what it is. Let me take this away. Thank you. I'll be back in a moment. Cheers. What is this beautiful dish? 
pretty guy. Oh. The Fonzie. fish is Alfonsino. It's a beautiful fish, as you'll discover. Oh, that's beautiful. And the food is what keeps us right. Yes. Have a bad diet. Oh, you have yeah. problems all your life. Yeah, that's true. So true. And that's my philosophy as well. We're kindred spirits. Well, I'll tell you what, not getting much talking because the food's so good. <laughs> <laughs> You'd find that, wouldn't you, with your guests? <laughs> no time to talk, got to eat. <laughs> Out here, on your own, you could sing as loud <laughs> as you want till your heart's content. Am I allowed to sing at the table? Totally. My grandfather used to say, you're not allowed to sing at the table. He used to growl me. Oh. I always ask people. Oh, please sing at my table. table. I'm going to play you a little song right. that I wrote, and I haven't finished it yet, because that's, that's what happens with all my songs. I go about three quarters of the way, then I start a new one. <laughs> but I only have to write one more verse. But it it's actually a little bit about my, my life and how I started and all that. In the 70s, back in high school, I was Miss Goody Two Shoes. I would never be caught dead, smoking dope in the back room. I was Little Miss Invisible till the day I told you I can sing as good as her, and I play guitar too. I've come a long way since school, an exception to the rule. Now at 49 years, I make my own rules. Here I am right now. On middle ground, taking a ride on the merry-go-round, never too old, go with the flow. I love it when it don't matter. I cross my own bow. Gosh, she's so much fun, that Tina. I'm having a hell of a day here. But my next dish, I'm doing a, a sausage dish. First thing I'm going to do is pop these sausages on because this pan is ready. These sausages are just made up the road in Wellsford and they are gluten free, there's no preservatives, they're pure pork, they've got fennel seeds in them, it's just how I like them. He makes a variety of sausages, actually you'll love them. And I thought that this sausage dish would be appropriate for Tina and I today. Over here I've boiled some kumara, just Boil them in water and salt, and they're going to be part of the dish too. So a bit of oil here, just to heat up. Watch out for my sausies, check them. Carrots over here, just going to take the skin off. Cut it in half, and then put them in my fry pan over here. And I'm going to pan fry that so I can leave them over there. Keep checking the sausies. They're coming along just fine here. And over here with the carrots, I'm going to put in some French beans. Now beans are in season at the moment. I've got some snow peas here that I'm going to throw in with the carrots. Turn those carrots over. I like my carrots really crunchy. The goodness is still in them. I'm going to bring my little pan here into play. Tad of oil on the bottom just so that it greases the bottom. And I'm going to cut this apple up into pieces, just some segments. I'm putting the apple into my dish today, a little bit of sugar over the top of it. Just going to have a little bit of sweet with the dish. Just check on the old snarlers over here. Yep, turn them over. My apples are shaping up over there. 
I'm using the same tongs, it doesn't matter, it's all the same dish. Turn them over. It's all pan work today with this dish. Into here, put these French beans. They don't need long. And then toss them in with the carrot. Just took a couple of cloves into this. Okay, I'll turn that off. These are ready. I'm just going to pop a little bit of oil into my boiled kumara. Just to warm them up. It doesn't matter if they get a bit of a tan on them. They'll taste just as delicious. I'm going to put this in here because I need this pan. And with this pancetta, which I've also got from Greg and Kath, actually, up the road in Wellsford. Now, I love this pancetta crispy, so let's crisp it up. Turn that off, don't overcook it, whatever you do. And I'm going to plate this dish up. Space, your company, your beautiful food, have guitar, <laughs> feel like singing. <laughs> Look what you've provided me with. Aww. It's just awesome. It's just such a beautiful, wonderful feeling. Wide open space. And look at this. Mm. Yummy, eh? Mm. My children would love this. Would they? Mm. Well, they're not, unfortunately, I don't know how this happened, but they're not seafood eaters. Is that right? I don't know how it well, look. You must have taken after your husband. <laughs> he loves seafood. <laughs> he even loves kinna, and he's a Pākehā. Mm. <laughs> Tina, I'm just racing off to the kitchen. I've got this gorgeous little number lined up, and I'll be back in a hurry. Thank you. Because the sun's going down. And That's got to be the name of a song. <laughs> Don't let the sun go down on me. <laughs> I love that song. It is a good song. <laughs> I'll be back. See you in a mo. <laughs> I'm cooking her something special for dessert today. It's only something little. I'm only making enough for the two of us and one more, just in case someone else comes. It's called the Betty Cuthbert Sponge. It's something I made when I was nine years old. I've got some water on here and I've peeled some apples, putting that in there. And I'm going to, this time, put some tamarillos in because tamarillos are in season and they're tasting fantastic at the moment. So I put this little bit of sugar in, there's about a quarter of a cup here, and I'm just gonna fry these on as soon as I've peeled them up here. So I'm just going to put them in there like that and poach these little beauties. This is an old-fashioned apple and tamarillo sponge. That won't take long to poach in the water. It used to be stew in the old days, but they're poaching away there. While that's doing its trickery over there, I'm going to get onto the sponge bit. So into my bowl here, I'm going to put in it's about four ounces of butter and the same amount of sugar here. Just about a cup of sugar. Cream that up. See, we're going the old fashioned way. We're going to have a little sweet here. Right, now into this put one organic egg into there, beat that up further, 
just going to put a little bit of milk in here. Probably about a quarter of a cup. Now this recipe is easy peasy. I must admit I haven't made it for a very, very long time. And do you know Betty Cuthbert? She's 86 years old today and still alive and kicking. So this is for her, actually. Tina and I are going to enjoy the spoils of it. Over here, I've got four ounces of flour. And I'm going to put in two teaspoons of baking powder. Now I've already sifted the flour and then just fold it in to the mixture here. I really feel like I've made this. My jute fruit is ready and I'm going to pop them into my little greased ramekins here. I can spoon in my fruit, starting with the tamarillo. And then on top of that, pop the sponge mixture. It's quite good these days to cook just enough, just what you need and one more for that person that could possibly come in the door as well. Good old fashioned manaki tanga takes some preparation. As you know. Now into the oven, 190 degrees, it's a preheated oven. And I'd say for about 20 minutes. Let's have a look after that, okay? Let's take a peek. I think they're perfect. Let's have a look. Good old fashioned apple and tamarillo sponge. Blanky doing the trick? Yes, thank you. Oh, it's your special Blanky that I'm allowed to wear today. It is, it is. Well, not it's just many, got up a bit. Not many people get to wear that Blanky oh, for, for what it you. is, but oh, it's... Very lucky. Let's hurry up and finish off our beautiful lunch. I don't want to spoil that. Oh. It looks too good. We'll give it a go anyway. I'm going to. <laughs> I don't want it, <laughs> but I'm going to. It's the first thing I made in my whole life. Is that right? That was any good anyway, that I remember. Very tasty. Hmm. And you know, with dessert too, because I, I suppose a lot of people kind of go, no, I won't do dessert, you know, if they're out for dinner or whatever. The fact that it's in this lovely little dish makes you think you're not having much. And that's, that's got to be the trick. You're not. Something beautiful and yeah. tasty like this. And not much. Not much. <laughs> oh, there was that tamarillo. Yummy. Hmm. Well, we're at the very end and you know what happens then. Another waiter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you're singing with me. Okay, so I'm priming you up for this. Oh, That's why I said that. Well, Give you five minutes the, to think about it. Well, as so long as it's a one-liner. Okay, I'm hooky not very good. Mm. Uh, yeah, oh. oh, you've got to know a line of you know something oh, there. Probably. I wasn't even going to sing that, but I, those that you know most of us know those. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm winging this. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I was thinking about um, something from um, a little way back and I also want to introduce the strum that I first learned because it is the Māori strum and it's the only way you can play these songs. Let's hope I remember it. Hi, it is. You're really here at last Hi, it am I Not a cloud in the sky To coin a phrase This is the day of days You're welcome as the sun shines a king by God 
This is a one time We'll really have a fling Hide in my Everything is combined Throughout the land I want to shake your hand Hide in my We're the Mutual Admiration Society today, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to get you to sing a song with me. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Hey, Pao.